Hi everyone, this is Felipe Munera from the University of Miami and I will be presenting on abdominal vascular injuries. I have nothing to disclose. Over the next 15 minutes, we will describe the organ uh, vascular injuries and the CT findings of unusual but important size of major vascular injury in patients with blunt abdominal pelvic trauma including those of the abdominal aura, IVC, renal veins, and other vascular structures. We will also present a few penetrating vascular injuries uh, for purpose of uh, comparison. The majority of the centers nowadays evaluate patients with uh, blunt uh, vascular injuries using dual phase CT. The arterial phase is more sensitive sensitive for the evaluation of uh, contained vascular injuries such as pseudoneurysm and the portal phase is more sensitive for active bleeding and the evaluation of parenchymal injury. A recent report has shown that the vascular injuries seen at CT have a higher than previously reported incidence around 20 percent and they are strongly associated with the invasive uh, treatment. Let's look at a couple of uh, examples. On this case, uh, MVA, the polar phase uh, demonstrated a small amount of uh, perispinic fluid, slight irregularity of the parenchyma, no obvious active bleeding. However, on the late arterial phase, note a small pseudoneurysm that became isoattenuating on the polar phase and therefore invisible. This patient was treated with a uh, embolization. A second example, on the arterial phase, small lacerations, perispinic fluid, and no evidence of vascular injury. On the arterial phase, on the same case, note the pseudoneurysm that becomes isoattenuating on the portal phase and therefore invisible. This patient actually became hemodynamically unstable shortly after this examination and was taken to the OR where a splenic rupture was found due to a rupture of this pseudoneurysm. In this example, uh, there's an extensive uh, liver laceration and the portal phase demonstrates significant active lead. Note how there was only there were only a, a couple of a small foci of active extravasation on the early arterial phase. The portal phase provides a second point in time to assess the rate to assess the rate of bleeding. In this case, the arterial and the portal phase demonstrate a small pseudoneurysm that does not change in size and morphology between the two phases. The patient was treated with embolization. Patients with pancreatic injuries, uh, the uh, main cause of early mortality is uh, acute hemorrhage from major vascular injury. This is an example of a significant peripancreatic uh, arterial extravasation in a patient with a pancreatic injury and a large uh, duodenal hematoma. That was treated uh, surgically. Blunt uh, vascular bowel injuries are more difficult to diagnose uh, and uh, may present uh, with uh, initially uh, not uh, uh, obvious uh, clinical findings. In this patient, uh, status quo MVA, there was a seatbelt sign on the abdominal wall, small amount of hemoperitoneum, mesenteric stranding, a node in the coronal reformation, decrease in the bowel wall enhancement of this inferior loop compared with the normal bowel wall enhancement of this adjacent bowel loop. Also, note the normal vasculature in this uh, bowel loop compared to uh, the one with the injury where we cannot really appreciate the mesenteric vasculature. Additionally, there was a non-specific small bowel fissure sign that suggests uh, decreased peristalsis of this small bowel loop. Based on these findings, 
this patient was taken was uh, diagnosed with a mesenteric uh, vascular devascularization of a uh, bowel loop. The patient was initially observed since the uh, surgeon uh, did not find uh, significant clinical peritoneal signs, but uh, later was taken to the ward when the patient became symptomatic where a large uh, mesenteric injury with a uh, devascularization of that bowel loop was uh, uh, found and the, uh, was resected in this place. A companion case with a more obvious injury, no the active bleeding within the mesenteric, mesenteric hematoma, hyperemia of the bowel loops, and hemoperitoneum, consistent with uh, active bleeding within the mesenteric as well as associated bowel injury. Those patients with active extravasation within the mesentery are more often treated uh, surgically because of the underlying uh, uh, frequent association of uh, bowel injury. IVC injuries are rare, and when secondary to blown trauma, are more likely to show extravasation, contour abnormality, and associated hepatic lacerations due to uh, the more uh, significant force that is required to injure this uh, retroperitoneal structure. The prognosis is worse as the injuries uh, get closer to the heart and when there is evidence of active extravasation on the CT examination. Fortunately, the most injured segment is the infrarenal IVC that carries a better prognosis. Let's look at a couple of cases. In this uh, example, there is significant irregularity of the IVC and a larger retroperitoneal hematoma. Note, significant active arterial extravasation on delayed images and on the delayed, delayed coronal reformation, there is a feeling defect within the IVC, irregularity of the vascular structure and the large amount of uh, active arterial extravasation with segmental devascularization of the lower pole of the right kidney. This patient was treated uh, surgically and actually survived. Another example, a little bit more subtle, there is retroperitoneal standing surrounding the IVC. Note a slight irregularity of the IVC on the right side and anteriorly as well as mild thickening of the IVC wall. This uh, surgically proven injury not, uh, did not require repair. Companion case, a patient status post gunshot wound to the right uh, thoracoabdominal uh, region. Note uh, the IVC injury with irregularity. There in the retrohepatic IVC, which has a, a significant uh, worse uh, prognosis than other injuries, the patient had a biliary fistula as well. A companion case, a patient who was stabbed in the right back, node retroperitoneal hematoma, the IVC is not well delineated. There is no evidence of active arterial extravasation, but based on these indirect findings, an injury of the IVC was suspected and later shown proven in the OR. Patient with extensive hepatic laceration and injury of the right hepatic vein, which are important, sometimes require surgical repair and may be associated with an, a higher risk of a concomitant arterial injury. Blood, or abdominal aortic injury, is rare, but uh, is increasingly being recognized. Most common associated uh, injuries are spine fractures. Patients who present with a free aortic rupture usually are hemodynamically unstable and taken immediately to the OR and uh, often do not survive. Patients who are stable more often are found to have intimal injuries or pseudoneurysms on the CT examination. Injuries that are above the superior mesenteric artery in zone one or those below the renal arteries in zone three tend to have slightly better prognosis and are more often treated with endovascular repair. Injuries in the uh, middle zone between the SMA and just below the renal arteries 
have a worse prognosis and uh, are more, most often treated uh, surgically. Patients with injuries in zone one or three who have intimal tears or large intimal flaps that are non-complicated are often treated non-operatively and require follow-up as CT examinations. An example with mesenteric retroperitoneal stranding around the IVC and the aura and an intimal flap in the abdominal aura. Follow-up examination demonstrates that the flap is stable and the patient was treated medically. Additionally, the patient presented with an external fracture. Another example of an injury in the infrarenal aura with an intimal flap, no the normal external contour, and an extensive retroperitoneal hematoma that was treated medically. Injuries of the opera abdominal aura in zone one may often be associated uh, with intrathoracic injuries, as in this case with uh, several intimal flaps in the descending thoracic aura. And this patient was also treated medically. In this example, there is a dissection of the abdominal aura with an extensive uh, retroperitoneal hematoma and associated uh, distraction injury of the lumbar spine. This is an example with a pseudo a the bifurcation and dissection involving the bilateral iliac arteries and extensive retroperitoneal uh, hematoma in a patient that was treated surgically. In a different case of status post NVA, there is active bleed in the retrocleural region, periaortic. Note on the delay images how it changes morphology and increases in size. In size, this patient was uh, embolized and additionally had a left lower pole laceration with small amount of active bleed and perirenal hematoma. In a companion case with a gunshot wound in the retroperitoneal with an aortic pseudoneurysm and retroperitoneal hematoma treated with endovascular repair. Another patient with a penetrating injury, a stab wound here in the left back. The trajectory goes through the retroperitoneum towards uh, the abdominal aura. There is irregularity from intimal flaps of the abdominal aura and periaortic uh, hematoma in this patient that was treated with endovascular repair. Other injuries of, uh, from branches of the uh, abdominal aura may also be uh, di uh, diagnosed on the uh, CT examination. And this is a, an unfortunate case of a lady uh, who was pregnant, uh, presented with active bleed within the mesenteric, mesenteric hematoma, a pericolonic with a transverse colon injury and complete a placental abruption. In another example, a big case with an a, a status post NVA, no the stranding in the uh, retroperitoneum, feeling defect in the left renal vein, and active bleed that is venous, only seen on delay images, note that it's not appreciated on the early phase. Another more dramatic case with a left uh, renal vein injury, no the occlusion, with a retroperitoneal hematoma and significant uh, delay nephrogram as well as delay excretion. In conclusion, dual phase CT is essential to uh, decrease the potential for uh, missing uh, contain or uh, vascular injuries and is more sensitive uh, to evaluate uh, for active arterial extravasation as well as parenchymal injuries. It is also important to develop a search plan that includes all the abdominal uh, vascular structures to avoid uh, potentially missing these uncommon but uh, important injuries. Thank you for your attention.